<laughs> Wait, I want you record. Who oh, is recording? Oh, we just... <laughs> He's the CRO of Saver, Saver of Life Health Tech Startup and co founder. Okay, okay. Hello. Hi. On your camera. I can't hear you, Queen Eight Way. Oh, okay, I mute. I, I muted my laptop. <laughs> On your camera, Michin. Wait, ah. Uh... Oh my god, I cannot simply say stuff already because you're recording. <laughs> yeah, so only one for. <laughs> Wait, I pause first. Ah, uh, can. <laughs> <laughs> guys. Can you get ready with your slides, your PDF slides? For group nine. Hi guys, how are you guys doing? We're fine. So can I share my screen? Yeah, you can try to like just test la, just test first. Just uh, try. Have you guys all eaten? No, haven't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Not yet. Go grab Maybe, some, something. Maybe you just finish your class, is it? Privity. I know, I was in another event. Oh, wow. Oh, damn. <laughs> Uh, are we the first group to present for this breakout room? Yeah, you are, you are the first group. Oh, I thought there was another group. <laughs> hey, your face didn't inform you, eh? Yeah, yeah, I told them the time already. 12 the team. Hey, I thought group one. Oh, did I read it wrong? You are the... Ah, uh, copy-paste lah, though. You copy-paste lah. <laughs> what? <laughs> you copy-paste lah. Huh, group one will be the first group to present in breakout room three. Nah. <laughs> no, it's group nine. Uh, okay then. Okay. I have to mentally prepare now. <laughs> Hazan, stop smiling. <laughs> stop laughing. I mean, kata musuk lah. You just copy paste. <laughs> Exposing me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think the judges lah lambat masuk. Not another five minutes. Yeah. Hello, group eleven, group thirteen. Wait, why isn't it like group nine, ten, eleven? Why is it like nine, eleven? Yeah, what? It's 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 odd oh. and even number group. Oh, fair, fair, fair. I see. I see. Hey, hi, hi, Putra. Hi, Vichan. Vichan. Eh, hey, Azwan pun ada lagi ya? Of course. Tidak bertahan. Tidak bertahan. Aduh, jangan lagi tu. <laughs> uh. By the way, looking sharp, all of you. Ah, uh, kena. The best. All the best, guys. First time siap tengok Azwan macam improper. Apa improper? Ya, yeah, kalau tak copy background tak merepek dah. Oh, alah. Ini event serius kan? Pasti tak serius. <laughs> <sighs> um, guys, please remember to rename yourself. Now. Oh, we just are here. Right, so everyone's here, group nine, everyone, everyone here. Team leaders of group nine. Nine is here. Yeah, here. All the members are here. 
Okay. Uh, team leader for group 11, everyone's there. Everyone's here. Oh, okay. Group 13. Team leader. Yep, everyone's here. All right. Okay, I think we can start our pitching competition. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to have our pitching competition. But before that, let me do some brief introduction to our judges uh, and the faces and the competition structures. First of all, my name is Azwan. I'm the admin. To assist me, we have Yin Quen, the timekeeper, and Vi Chen as the backup. For our judges, I would like to introduce you, Ms. Amalina Arifin, Program Coordinator for Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative, YCLE, and Mr. Peter Lee, Chief Revenue Officer, CRO, and Co-Founder at Savior of Life, Health Tech Startup. Now, I'm going to brief you guys on the structure of the pitching session. Basically, each group has been allocated about 20 minutes, which the breakdown will be 10 minutes of presentation, five minutes of Q&A, and next five minutes of silence for the judges to deliberate the results and for the next group to prepare for the presentation. For the presentation order, group nine will start first, then proceed with group 11, and finally group 13. The timekeeper will remind you when, in, when you have three minutes, one minute of when time is up, at the Zoom chat box. I repeat again, the timekeeper will remind you when you have three minutes, one minute, or when the time is up at the Zoom chat box. And finally, participants are allowed to share screens, but me, the admin, will double check the slides during the presentation. If you are caught using different slides than the one that you submitted, you will be automatically disqualified. Without further ado, I would like to ask group nine, are you ready for presentation? Yeah, so I share my screen right now. Yeah. It gives me a minute. It's okay. Okay, could you guys see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, so I start now. All right, okay. I in count of three, two, one, start. Okay. Good afternoon to the general public. In light of recent events, we, as the Inspector General of Police of the Royal Malaysia Police, are here today to address the buzzing social media post that has sparked the interest of the public. The emergence of public dissatisfaction with the value of compounds that have been given to the burger hawker after he was compounded 50,000 ringgit Malaysia for violating the SOP of the control order under the Emergency Law Prevention and Control of Infection Disease, Amendment 2021. To start, the Malaysian government has gazetted a new order under the Emergency Prevention and Control of Infection Disease Ordinance 2021. This new order stated that a compound of 10,000 ringgit Malaysia can be given to any individual who commits an offence under this act. If prosecuted, the individual may be liable for a fine not exceeding 100,000 ringgit Malaysia or imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years or both. In ordinance, in accordance with this, a, a local burger hawker has been issued a fine of 50,000 ringgit Malaysia for operating past curfew according to a complaint received by our police officer. We understood that the amount of compound issue for the burger hawker was indeed excessive, and we heard the angry voices of the public. However, we do not condemn the police officer for issuing such an amount, as he was only doing his job as a lawful officer in which he had taken the newly issued order to literally. In this pandemic, 
we understand that everyone is struggling and having a hard time, but the safety of the public is paramount. Hence, the main reason for implementing a strict SOP in order to fight this bio war. To those who have strictly complied with the SOP, stay indoor and follow the three Cs, we would like to extend our gratitude as you are the key contributor to flatten the curve of this pandemic. We as the PDRM are only the enforcers for the act and laws that are imposed by the government. In addition to that, the dispute that occurred between two police officers who were on duty has been resolved in a good way for both parties. We deem this as an internal affair dealt within the PDRM. The PDRM has proposed some ways that will be discussed in detail with the hawker, and the matter has been addressed to the court as we in the PDRM cannot alter a fine that has been issued. We will try our level best to help the hawker so that leniency can be appealed. Some steps and measures have been taken to ensure that such an event does not occur again. We would like to take initiative to prevent any misunderstandings in the future. Therefore, I will hand over the floor to my partner, Inspector Sarah, to talk about the solution and suggestion we will come up with. Thank you, Inspector Jimmy. So at this moment, the clarity of this act needs to be revisited as it does not define how serious an offence should be charged with. As the ordinance was issued quite in a surprise manner, we hope that the government will come up with a complete and more detailed guideline for the PDRM to enforce. The PDRM will release a proper process flow to the public regarding the issuing of fines, as in how the fine would be issued, and the standardization of the fine according to the specific offenses. As mentioned before, we are simply following the orders and laws that are set by the government and that we do not have the jurisdiction to alter the orders. Not only that, the PDRM has also proposed a two-strike rule, which will be imposed where the individual will be given a warning for their first two times offense. If found to be repeated the offence, a compound of 10,000 ringgit will be issued. If prosecuted, the individual may be liable for a fine not exceeding 100,000 ringgit or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years or both. In addition to this, we propose developing a new system to record the warning strikes for each individual as right now we have yet to have a proper way to record those warnings. The warnings will be posted on our website, which allows the public to check the number of strikes they have and for us, the PDRM, to keep track. However, we do see that there is a gap in the transparency of this current act. Therefore, we need to close this gap by providing awareness and training to our enforcers, which are the police officers, on the act itself and using the most considerate approach to solve this public issue. For example, while waiting for the federal government to come up with a precise and clear enforcement rules and guidelines, we will use our level best and a more considerate approach on our own discretion to enforce the act on the public as shown next in order to have a better clarification on how the ordinance works. As shown here, this is an example of clarification of compounds we mentioned. Of course, the final amount will be up to the federal government to decide. This example is based on Act 342, Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases back in 1988 in Malaysia itself. So in short, we are aware of the consequences if we do not handle this properly, and we are determined to do everything we can to ensure the public safety and health against the pandemic. Thus, we would like to request cooperation for all parties to always comply to the movement control order and SOPs that have been set in order to contain the virus. Lastly, we hope that everyone can stay safe and healthy during these tough times. We strongly believe that following the SOPs will help reduce the cases of COVID-19 disease, and we will win this bio war very soon. Thank you so much for listening from our side. Okay, thank you. Now we proceed with Q&A session. Judges, if you have any question. 
Or right now, yeah, sorry. Our... Okay. Go ahead. Sorry, Amelina. Sorry. No, please, please go ahead. So, um, just wanted to ask right now is um, so as a judge, we acting as a um, press conference uh, reporter, right? So we right. will pour out questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, can I go back to the first, second slide, the third slide? Right. Um, so just wanted to ask right now, um, um, so, you know, how, how, um, how do we, um, how do the, um, you know, person in charge, uh, the, the police officer, um, why would they um, initially offer um, a 50,000 um, ticket while where, you know, the limit stated there was 10,000. That was my question. All right, uh, I will try to ask, I'll try to answer the question that given. So uh, actually, uh, if we go uh, back to the, to the previous uh, cases, which is the hawker is repeating the same uh, offense. She is the second offense that had been created by the hawker. So that, that's why uh, the officer give uh, that kind of amount to the, to the hawker. 50,000 because previously he was, he was fined for 1,000 ringgit for the same offense. Right, so this is the second um, offenses committed from the same um, person. Yes. By sir. the same person. Okay. Hi. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, my name is Amalina and I am from the Suara Rakyat Press. And uh, I have a few questions uh, with regards to um, the, the action of the police force in terms of implementing this uh, absurd rule. Uh, because I am, uh, I am from the Suara Rakyat Press, uh, you can expect a, a, a more radical ideology from our side. Um, I, I guess I want to ask uh, why you mentioned that this is the second time um, that this person is fine. So don't you think that 1,000 to 50,000 is uh, a bit too excessive? And um, what is the action taken against? Is there any action that is taken against the police? Um, I mean, the police officer who is, uh, you mentioned, who is doing his job. From the standardization of the uh, fine that we mentioned, or the overview that he was fined. Sorry, uh, Vikrina, you're a bit soft. Can you, um, yeah? Would you mind saying that again? My apologies. Um, I would like to uh, ask for clarification of your question. Do you mean the? the proposed solution that we mentioned of the standardization of the fine or do you mean the one 2000 that was fined by our police officer yeah I, I, i'm referring to the the first fine that was uh, that was issued against the hawker so i guess uh, my question is um, you know why the drastic change from 1000 to 50000 one thousand. Um, initially the compound an individual may be compound of 10 thousand uh, up to a hundred thousand so if you see from um from so if we if the hawker has been fined uh given a four uh, first fine which is ten thousand but he keeps doing the act that shows that he does not take this um take this rule very seriously so from our side we feel like giving after giving him ten thousand and then issuing fifty thousand would be justified because um, because he has already not taken the first fine into consideration or taken it seriously. Okay, and uh, the second question is like uh, I, I see in the slides it says more considerate approach and propose a solution. And I um, you know as part of the press, uh, I am just wondering if you could clarify that uh, as to what that entails because um, the right yet feels a bit um, uncertain now with um, the the information that's provided. Yes, um, as mentioned by our inspector, we have proposed some solutions as discussed below. Um, we feel like 
due to the rapid uh, insertion or rapid um, rapid implementation of the SOP, um, we know that some of um, we know that some of the sorry sorry to interrupt, but time is up. Time is up for Q and A. Um, I apologize, but we have to follow the strict timing. Um, now we proceed with five minutes of silence for judges to deliberate their results and group 11 to prepare with their presentation. While we're, while waiting for the five minutes, uh, Group Eleven, can you test your uh, uh, sharing screen? Sorry, just want to ask. Like each group is about three members, four members. Uh, depends. Some some got five members, four members. Oh, so for Group Nine, how many members were there? Yes, five members. Okay. Thank you. Just wondering, Peter, are you ready? Yeah, we're both ready. All right. So, Group 11, you guys ready? Yes. Okay. So, we can start with the presentation now, Yin Kuen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to everyone. There has been numerous speculations and allegations made by the public regarding the viral issue of a burger salt marker who was fined RM50,000 by one of our police officers in Kelantan. We, the Royal Malaysia Police, respect and value the public rights in freedom of speech. First and foremost, I, Shafiq Zamri, as the Inspector General of the Royal Police Malaysia, am standing here today accompanied by Sharifah Quraisha, the Deputy Inspector General of Royal Malaysia Police, Nick Nur Ali Kisina, the Chief Police of Kelantan, and Putra Salihuddin, the spokesperson from Public Relations of Royal Malaysia Police, to address today's matter. We would like to make a statement on behalf of the Royal Malaysia Police addressing the issue that has been lingering on the social media and the news, amassing an uproar from the public towards the Royal Malaysia Police. The uproar stemmed from a viral post by a local burger hawker who was fined by one of our officers. The officer had issued a fine of RM50,000 to a burger hawker for operating past 10 p.m. violating the MCO standard of procedure. His action of issuing such a sum of fine was absurd and insensible, despite the SOP violations. On behalf of the Royal Malaysia Police, we would like to sincerely apologize for the confusion and dissatisfaction 
which was expressed by most of the people, especially business owners, such as the Burger Hawker himself. We acknowledge that the standard of procedure guidelines are unclear and ambiguous, especially for traders and eateries, as it is not in black and white, which consequently caused such operations to be interrupted, as well as for the police officer to be unclear on how much they should find. This can be seen when the aforementioned police officer, prior to the recent compound of RM50,000, had already given the same burger stall a fine of RM1,000 for the same offence. Hence, the basis of this leap in fine of, in, sorry, hence the basis of this leap in fine was stem from the lack of clarity and guidance on how much the fine should be imposed for a repeated offence committed by the burger store owner. Not only that, we also understand the displeasure which was expressed by the public where enforcement officers have their individual and varying interpretations of the ruling itself. As there are only limits on the fines, questionable compound notices might be issued by the enforcement officers due to a different understanding of the law. The issues have created a vicious cycle that should be brought to an end immediately by the Royal Major Police to prevent anything unto the public. We understand that we are lacking in this matter and we would like to apologize and ask for your understanding and cooperation, especially in these trying times as it is our very first experience in dealing with this kind of situation where all of us are trying to adapt to this new norm. Any individuals that are subjected to an unfair and discriminatory treatment of law by its enforcer should fight for their own rights. And we, the Royal Major Police, will not turn a blind eye on this kind of predicament. We want to reassure the public that measures are being taken to ensure that our officers should be impartial and sensible when enforcing the law. The law should never be used as an instrument of exploitation, but rather to uphold order and justice. Thus, to address this issue, we would like to propose revised and more comprehensive guidelines for the standard of procedure, especially for business owners, so that the guideline will be clear and detailed where it will help in boosting the economy as well as maintaining the safety of the public which is our number one priority. It will also help to provide these businesses, owners, clarity who are trying to survive financially and keep their business and livelihood going. In light of that, enforced tiered fines according to the number of offenses will be done to promote leniency and understanding among both the enforcers and also the public. We believe that it is more effective and will also prevent any misunderstandings that might be caused among offices themselves or even between the enforcers and the public. Alongside that, it would also prevent any assumptions regarding the number of times such offenses have been done before. We understand that in the midst of the pandemic, everyone is going through tough times, be it financially or even mentally. Thus, we firmly believe that through tiered fines, we are able to promote understanding between all parties. Nonetheless, we'll, we would also like to fully utilize the use of my suggestion application to better disseminate information to the public pertaining to the formation, fine tiering, and guidelines. The My Sejahtera applications have been widely used and accepted by the public as a tool to navigate them during these trying times. Currently, the application has been effective at helping the public to assess their health risk status, provide information on COVID-19 statistics, such as the current number of cases, which is 9,353 as of 10 of July identify COVID-19 hotspot areas, as well as giving virtual health advisory. A more intricate and diversified use of this application in terms of the ever-evolving ASOP would certainly benefit the people to comply better with the MCO. The application can be utilized as a one-stop center to keep the public in the loop of any new changes of the SOPs, rather than having them to refer SOPs from different sources, such as National Security Council website. Along that, this effort would undeniably aid the public to have a comprehensive understanding of the latest update, especially on the COVID-19 regulations, and also serve as a reference point for our officers throughout the country. This will not only ease the public's use, but also smooth the communication between our officers and ensure dependable dissemination of information, which will prevent misunderstanding between enforcers from repeating as well. And now I will pass the stage to my deputy to continue with our statement on this matter. Um, thank you very much, Inspector General. I am Sharifa Quraisha, the Deputy Inspector General of Royal Malaysia Police. I'll be taking over the floor and covering the drawbacks and will summarize the whole statement mentioned. 
we are very well aware that the proposed changes or policies would have their drawbacks and skepticism by the public. So the uh, situation of the current pandemic is ever evolving. Ergo, the constant changes made in the SOPs are inevitable as we are adapting to the new norms. The uncertainty of rules uh, and regulations of SOPs has resulted in number of inconveniences to the public, impeding the efficacy of the enforcement uh, of the law enforcement. However, we can assure you that the Royal Malaysia Police is taking measures to ensure these doubts and uncertainties could be lifted um, from these ever-changing SOPs. Um, on top of that, uh, we also believe that due to the inconsistency of um, the rules and regulation of the SOP guidelines, we might face some difficulties while trying to constantly update um, the guidelines as it may create dispute among offenders, especially the past offenders. So this is due to the policy um, not being re retrospective and the new policy does not apply to um, past cases. However, this precaution is taking after full consideration and adapted to the current requirement of the situation. Last but not least, um, the final drawbacks that we would like to address is that the technology is not accessible to all, especially for, for people, uh, those who are from uh, the rural and impoverished region. Um, so to further explain the, the third drawback, uh, we have made a SWOT analysis of the utilization of MySajatra to combat the skeptic, skepticism um, that might exist among the public. So it is known that MySajatra is an application that has already been used and has been widely accepted by Malaysian, but there is a group of people of um, communities uh, that has uh, limited access to technology as my suggestion is only accessible through smartphones and we are aware of that. Um, however, it must be highlighted that the opportunities of uh, my suggestion utilization on the other hand um, enables the application to expand their core operations through the amplifications of its features. And in contrast, the uh, poor accessibility of the internet and gadget as well as the inability to use gadget effectively could render this effort useless. We have thought this through, but we firmly believe that um, the good outweighs the bad in this situation. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, um, to solve this backlash of the public due to the unclear and ambiguous uh, standard of procedures, as well as the different interpretation by law, uh, by, by it enforces, uh, we propose to develop uh, a more comprehensive guideline for stakeholders involved and to utilize uh, the use of technology optimally in disseminating information. So we truly hope such an in incident would uh, be avoided in the future. And it is imperative for the public to be our eyes and ears to help us further improve our services. We are very much open to new ideas and suggestions from uh, the public that do not hesitate to approach us. Thank you all for your attention. Now, if anyone have any questions, uh, we will do our best to uh, answer them. And therefore, I will pass the floor to my subordinate, Nick Alia and Putra Salah Salahuddin to answer your questions. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. So we're going to start with the Q&A session for five minutes. All right, proceed. Hi, hello. Uh, I am Zukrina from Suara Hakam. I would just like to ask, um, do you have any updates from the Burger Hawker guy? Is he going to lessen the fine or is the fine going to be the same? Can you please address the issue? Because I think that is what the public is most concerned about. Well, I'll answer that question for you. Um, Suara uh, Suhaka. So as an update from the Burger Store Honor, which is the name is... Uh, wait, hold on. The name of the burger owner, which is one Muhammad Faizal bin Mawan Kadir, has been lessened, has been go to the court to lessen the fine, and it was lessened the fine. So it wasn't actually the amount of disclose of the fine wasn't fifty thousand, but it was considerably lessened. But the amount of fine wasn't disclosed. So I hope that answers the question. Hi, my name is Amalina. I'm from um, the Star, and I'm just wondering uh, when you mentioned the stake, I mean the development of the guidelines. Can you identify some of the stakeholders that you intend to um, consult, and if you guys are even going, I mean, and what sort of um, method or what sort of um, strategy are you guys going to do in terms of stakeholder approach? Um, thank you, Miss Amalina. I'll be answering your question. Um, I believe. Um, regarding this, we will um, actually consult with um, the respective stakeholder involved, especially um, in enforcing the guideline, which is MKN itself, and also um, the Ministry of Health. And as we believe that 
um, the past um, guidelines has been sprung suddenly to the public. So we wouldn't want to inconvenience the public. So, to, so we actually have come out with a comprehensive timeline so that we, so that the public itself can assimilate to these changes. So as you can see from the slide, through the timeline, we will be having a discussion of the SOP and the centralized SOP will actually be a finalized version between all ministries. So there won't be any disagreement between um, any ministries itself. Um, yes, Ms. Aymar. Just, just to follow up, um, I mean, so you just are uh, going to involve the, uh, the government and ministries. There's no um, involvement between the grassroots uh, communities or like the private sectors, the um, hawker communities, etc. Um, thank you again for the question. But um, as you can see from the slide, there will be um, beta testing of these features itself. So we'll be um, receiving any complaints from the business owners of the public. And from that, we'll work from that to make improvement of the features. So for the finalized version, it will be based on the improvements of the society itself and also by the ministries involved. I hope that answers your question. Um, hey, this is Peter from Malaysia Kini. Um, I have one question. So how do you ensure that the information of the SOP and the guideline be clearly communicated through a platform other than MySajatra because um, not everyone own, you know, not everyone can access to the technology. So how do you ensure, which channel would you suggest um, to communicate the SOP guideline? Um, thank you, Mr. Peter. Uh, we will still be um, using the conventional ways because uh, yes, there are certain public um, that are not access, that don't have this access to the application. But still, uh, from the research that we have done, a lot of our, a lot of the public have access to the internet. So we will still be utilizing the application and to disseminate the information, but alongside that, we will still be using the conventional way to disseminate the information. Um, sorry, can I, uh, um, I have another question, is that how do you ensure that other channel will not, um, well, the message will not be, um, will be properly con communicated in, in, in just one platform because there's many other um, channels where people receive their news like Facebook, WhatsApp, et cetera, et cetera. How do we ensure that the message is not, uh, is, is not inappropriately um, communicated um, by people who misuse the information? Okay, I Please stop that, that. yeah. I, I think I can answer that question for you. So basically the reason why we try to use MySajatra is because it's a centralized app that's been used by all Malaysian because MySajatra has been used for vaccination program and stuff. So by putting such a stiff like SOP procedure or maybe fine, people can actually use on, only on just one platform. As we can know, MySajatra is owned- I'm Sorry, uh, Mr. Soleh, but yeah. th time's up. Oh. Time's up for Q&A session. All right. Right, so we're going to proceed with uh, five minutes of silence for the judges to deliberate the result and for the final group, group 13, to uh, prepare their presentation. Right, you guys can share your screen for checking, group 13. Sorry, as one just wondering uh, for group 11 is how many um, group members? Four people. Thank you. Uh, group 13, do you want to try to share your screen? Okay, good.
the judges are ready or oh, you need some more time? Ms. Amalina, okay. Um, probably give me um, probably one more minute. Is that okay? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, thanks. And, and we only have three groups, right? Yeah, only three groups. Great. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm good to go. Okay, Miss Amalina, you good to go? All right, group 13. All right, can everyone hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, good, good. Salam sejahtera semua. Good afternoon, everyone. Right. Thank you for attending our press conference. Today, we will be um, responding to the social media trending case of whether the 50K fine that was imposed on the burger hawker who violated the 10, uh, 10 p.m. curfew is justified or not. So to remind everyone, um, as of 1st of March, the amended law of the curf uh, says that the curfew allows eateries to operate until 10 p.m. Now, this incident took place on the 1st of April, by which the amended order is already in effect. And two of our police officers, we call them Police A and Police B, they received a complaint about a burger hawker that was still working past the allowed time. So, turns out to pick up their orders and that's why the shop was not closed. Now, the fact of the matter is the burger hawker did violate the curfew, which was supposed to be at 10 p.m. And as a result, police officer A decided to issue a compound of 50,000 ringgit. However, police officer B thinks that a first warning would have been a much a more appropriate measure um, for the burger hawker. So that said, we first would like to apologize to the Burger Hawker and the family members and you know, any similar um, small business who may have received any similar uh, unjust treatment, right? And during this press conference, we are gonna address how we resolve this internal dispute and provide clarification of this order and share what can you do to avoid falling victim to this offense. So I now pass it on to my Thank you, Inspector Clarissa. To explain on what my colleague has just said, the problem is the order under the Emergency Prevention and Control of Infectious Disease Management Ordinance 2021 will be further clarified to avoid any misinterpretations, especially the guidelines under the SOPs and to inform everyone of their rights to appeal for case review if one thinks that he or she is unjustly fined. So, to be more transparent, we would like to share with you how we handle the dispute between these two police officers. According to police officer A, he was just carrying out his duty in fining anyone that plot the SOPs, but a compound of 10K should have been imposed instead of 50K. We admit that this should have not happened and therefore we would like to take this opportunity to again to apologize to the burger hawker for the mental stress that he and his family went through after receiving the compound. When you look at police officer's B side, she's also right telling that it is important to be considerate of the offender situation, in this case, the burger hawker, before issuing a fine, especially during this difficult time, many people, especially the B40 and M40 groups are financially struggling and they're trying their best 
to generate some income to run the families. Having said all this, a fine amount of 10K will be issued to anyone who plot the SOPs. The reason for this is that to ensure that the public takes the SOPs seriously in our effort to stop the spread of the virus. Now I'll pass it again to Inspector Clarissa. Now, we're going to clarify on, uh, provide the clarification details on the matter order. First and foremost, um, all eateries and food operators must be closed by 10 p.m. In particular, all relevant activities, including cleaning, security checks, must have been done before 10 p.m. Hence, we would advise um, all food operators to have their final orders taken in by 9.30 so that they can conduct the relevant activities to ensure that they will still follow the curfew, right? The second is that for anyone who finds himself um, being imposed a fine by any police officer, that fine should only be 10,000 ringgit, nothing less and nothing more. And in the event that one is found guilty, it is, his or her case is being prosecuted, then one will be fined a maximum of 100,000 ringgit or may be imprisoned, but not exceeding seven years. So in response to the public's concern of being unjustly fined, uh, this review committee would be responsible for handling and investigating any and all appealed cases by the public who deemed that their fine was unfair, right? The second is that we would train and we can always remind our police officers to exercise more discretion in any and all situations that they're in before issuing a fine. So instead of seeing someone who's still out in the, in the streets past 10 p.m. instead of issuing them the fine, asking them, where are they going? Is it for a medical emergency? Is it to collect essentials like food and medication? Is it to help take care of a sick member? These are the questions and these are the exemptions that allow someone to break curfew, right? Last but not least, we have started a complaints logbook and this logbook would be used to record since this logbook will also be used by the review committee to determine whether the offender is a first timer or a multi time and will also help them determine the more appropriate course of action uh, based on the offense committed. So I'll pass it back to um, my colleague, Dr. Arun. Thank you, Inspector Clarissa. As a closing remark, we would like to remind the public that the primary aim of issuing the compound is not to punish the public, but rather to remind everyone about the seriousness of the pandemic and why is it very important to strictly comply to the SOPs to help us combat the virus. So please stay safe and stay healthy. Kita jaga kita and thank you for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us and we are willing to answer your questions. All right, thank you. So just a friendly reminder, the one who do the presentation cannot be answering the Q&A session. And another one will be that the priority for Q&A session will be given to the judges to ask their questions first. After that, the participants can ask their questions. All right. So we proceed with the Q&A sessions for five minutes, right? Peter, do you want to ask any questions? Um, just wanted to ask, how do you ensure that the logbook is going to, you know, um, enable the close? Um, uh, can you go back to the to the slide before? Um, Hold on, I'm trying. To go back by that. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. There we go. 
So how do you monitor, uh, is the logbook going to be manually or is it going to be online, you know, where it's live, where you share across? Um, how is it going to be like? Mm, hello, my name is Wendy. So regarding the logbook, logbook is going to be uh, on both sides. So if it's going to be a hard copy, then it will be updated on the online state. But if yeah, so everything would be um, handled in a hard copy, but we're going to update it in the soft copy style. Yes. If I may follow up on that, wouldn't that just increase the paperwork of the police force? Um, yes, that would increase the paperwork of the police force. But then, like, um, we don't know what will happen with the data in the internet. It might disappear. So it's better to have a hard copy um, as a backup plan. Thank you. Uh, so hi, my name is Amalina. I'm from The Vibes. Sorry, if, uh, Peter, do you want to have any other questions? Please read. Um, yeah, another question would be um, just to dispute on that, you know, where, where you mentioned about hard copy, uh, there will be a lot of missing data because if, if it is not updated on a daily basis live. So, and, and how would you resolve that? If, let's say the hard copy is missing as well. So are you gonna update it in a cloud or, you know? Um... Uh, okay, thank you for the question. So regarding the uh, hard copy of the logbook, we're going to make sure that all of our police officers are going to update the uh, the data online every day to make sure there's no mistake or like missing information from the hard copy to the soft copy site. Hi, my name is Amalina. I'm from The Vibes. And uh, I just want to ask, like, um, you know, you, you, you are very transparent in a way where you talk about like these two officers conflicting. Um, I, I'm just a bit concerned as to like, you know, um, as to the unity of the police force. Um, shouldn't the police force be seen as a united front? Uh, was there no briefing done to all these police officers before they go on enforcement? And my second question is, um, what is your comment about the police force not taking, I mean, taking action against the, the majority of the people, but not really taking action against the more Kayangan clusters, such as the ministers and also like celebrities? Mm. So um, first, first and foremost, like we did, we did not, uh, it's not that we did not train our police officer to exercise the more discretion for before issuing a fine, but it's just that we give our full trust to our officer um, in in carrying out their duty in giving in issuing the fine to the people. And um, regarding the second question, whether like we did uh, we didn't do a background check um give issuing a fine to whether the uh the the person who commit the law is, I mean, the person who violate the law is someone from uh, celebrities or like uh, normal people. So we think that like, it's it's not good to do a background check on the people who um, who commit, the, who violate the law. So it's better for us to just um, give the fine based on the how many times they have committed, I mean, how many times they have violated the law, yeah, in that way. Um, this is Peter from Malaysia Reserve. Um, listening to your um, answer just now, how would you trust your each of your police officer to exercise moral discretion when where each of them have a different background, so therefore they have a dif different um, um, different ways of handling things. Is there are you going to come up with a guideline? even for that um, and for them to exercise a moral discretion or are you still just going to trust your police officer to exercise the moral discretion? Uh, sorry, but, sorry, Mr. Peter and the rest of group 13, but time's up for the Q&A session. So we're going to proceed with the five minutes of silence for judges to give their deliberation and for everyone to just calm down a bit <laughs> before we wrap up the speaking session.
sorry to interrupt. Judges, you need more time, is it? I'm okay. I'm, okay. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, all right. So every every everything is done. Yeah. All right. So basically, that's wrap. That's the wrap of our pitching session. Uh, before we end, I would like to say some words of encouragement to our participants. Uh, I want I want you to know that you should be proud of what you on what you did today. I mean, it's not easy to come up with a press statement and answering Q and A sessions, preparing for them in a very short span of time, like three to two days like that. It can be a quite intimidating. I know some of you might like, feel like that, but it's okay. It's a learning experience to you. So chin up, be proud of yourself, and savor this experience. And I'd like to thank all uh, the judges, Miss Amalina and Mr. Peter, for spending some lovely time with us on you know, giving, giving some good experience to the participants. But before we leave, let's have a group photo as a commemoration and as a you know, memories for the participants. All right. Uh, Dichen, you ready? Speak lah, Yi Chen. Wait, wait, me? Oh, sorry. Uh, are you taking it? Because my I can't take screenshots on my laptop for some reason. Uh, okay lah, okay lah. Yeah. All right. So, three, two, one. Smile. Okay, again. Three, two, one. Smile. Okay, one more. Freestyle. Three, two. One, peace out. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the judges and participants. Um, for the participants, we see you at the uh, general meeting room, and for the judges, we see you at the other record. Right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It was really fun. I hope you had fun too, Peter. Thanks for having me too, and uh, appreciate you know. Happy to learn together with you guys. Thanks for doing the good job. Yo, you change. I think you can stop the recording. Ah. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, um, okay, so everyone uh have to go back to the main room, right? Or stay here? The main room. <laughs> main room can stay. Tak apa, korang nak stay sebab ambil gambar. Tapi... Oh, oh, oh. So, kita boleh balik main room mana? Hmm, tapi... So, how are you guys feeling? I have a question. Like, like will the marks be disclosed to us? Or... <laughs> or... Um, Azan? They want lah. I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure lah. But I can say that usually they will not disclose it lah. Hmm. All right, thank you. Let's start making a recording. <laughs> <laughs>